Audio quality is not going to be great on this one, as I'm kind of just dropping into it. I was prompted to make this video because I'm doing a project and I have to find films for influences. And I thought, what better place to look than my letterbox list? I, I have a lot of films on there. I'm not talking about my watch list. I mean the films I've actually seen already. I got a fuck. I've seen a lot of fucking films. Maybe too many films. Uh, not all of them great. Yeah, the minute I'm at 1,040. Uh, this year is 12, which is pretty good considering I'm only a month. Uh, we're only like a month into the year. Just going through some of them, some of them have really fucking weird plots, to be honest with you. Some of the films I've seen, uh, especially like the obscure 90s ones, which are, are quite prevalent here, especially for me, um, just fucking weird and wacky films. So I thought what might be fun is have a little drinky poo um, and see if we can have some fun trying to explain uh, the fucking randomness of some of these films. You, you won't believe some of the premise that gets through these sensors, that gets through these pitch meetings. If you ever want to get into film and you're worried that your idea won't stick or that it's not good enough or nobody wants to hear it, let let this be a fucking um, inspiration to you to listen to some of these uh, plots and be like, well, fuck, if that can get made, then my shit probably can. Silvio's a good one to start with, I think. Silvio is kind of an indie, indie feature about... Okay, so it's a monkey or an ape, but it's a guy in a monkey uh, mask. But he's made out to be a real monkey. He, he makes like puppet shows at his house, little finger puppets. Um, and there's this guy making a TV show in his basement. Um, and Silvio like gets on t gets on the, this public access TV, TV show, and he gets really popular because he smash, ma smashes shit on the show. But he doesn't like smashing shit because people are like, oh, he's just a dumb monkey. Uh, and he doesn't like being that. Uh, he just wants to make cute little finger puppet shows. With, oh, what's the dude? It's like this, he's got this little puppet that's called like Mr. Johnson or some shit. And it's this, it's this bald guy who just like pours tea. And, 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 and digs in the garden and plants a flower. It's adorable shit, man. It's so fucking adorable. Um, and he just wants to make his cute little puppet show. And no one will let him. Dave Made a Maze is a good, another good uh, sort of. I want to call it an indie film, but it's, it's fucking weird, man. Um, the creators refuse to disclose the budget, which I I think is very shifty, and I'm not sure why anyone would do that. It's about this guy who makes this little fort in his living room out of cardboard, and then he gets stuck in it, and his friends want to tear it down to get him out. He's like, you can't fucking tear this thing down, right? So they're like, well, fuck it, we'll go in and we'll get him out. And then they go in, and it's a TARDIS, right? It's bigger on the inside. It's much bigger on the inside. There's traps. There's, like, uh, there's, there's treasure rooms. Uh, there's, uh, there's all sorts in there. There's a fucking cardboard minotaur in there. They do so many creative things with the cardboard, and I would just highly recommend it. It's a, it's a great film. Almost immediately, like, it, it's... The apparent change in film style is just a, a clear cut cut off. Like, you know, this is like late 2020s, you got... 2020s. Uh, late 2000s, you got like e Incredibles, pretty good. Uh, Napoleon Dynamite. Uh, fucking King Kong was t 2005, that was 15 years ago. Oh, fuck, man. But, y you know, they've got an aesthetic style. There's a kick up in quality. And then you just turn a page. And it's fucking ginger snaps too. Man, Satan's Little Helper. Should we start with Satan's Little Helper? I think we should start with Satan's Little Helper. Satan's Little Helper is a film about uh, Satan. And his little helper. Did you see that? It's, it's, it's Satan. And on Halloween, Satan's going around a neighborhood. And he's fucking killing people, right? Uh, but... Satan is in a mask. He's in a Satan mask. So people just think he's like this trick-or-treater, right? It's like this stationary rubber mask. But he's going around, he's killing people. I think it's actually Satan. The things he does, he could just be this fucking psychopath dressed up as Satan, right? 
Um, so anyway, he's he's killing people. He comes across this little kid who's dressed as this classic red devil who's trick or treating, and the kid's this fucking sociopath who thinks, oh, it's so cool the way you're fucking murdering people or something like that. I can't really remember. Uh, I, I want to help you. Can I be your little helper? And there's, there's Satan. He doesn't talk, so he's like. Mm. So it's about Satan and his little kid going round, killing people. And what's her face from Vikings is in it. Uh, she's the the main woman out of Vikings. She was also in that shit film. What was it? Trick or treat? No, Trick or Treat was decent. Amusement. Shit film. Eventually he brings this Satan guy home to meet the family. It's a fucking strange film. And I'm actually in awe that it came out in 2004. Because I was sat there watching it like, this is some 1991 B-movie bullshit. Like I said, I want to go for obscure shit, not shit that, you know, massively came out in theatres. Get the fuck out of here, School of Rock was 2003. I watched that in cinemas. With friends. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Yes. I'm a 28-year-old man who still has to count on his fingers. Leave me alone. I'm in... I'm in misery. How old was I? 11? Uh... Okay, here... So this is a... I, I was like... I was trying to re-explain... The... Ha! I made this video because I, I, I was looking through this list and I came across the hot chick and I was trying to remind myself, I've definitely seen this film. I've definitely seen the hot chick. I remember this vividly. What was the plot of hot chick? And then I explained the plot to myself and things just spiraled really fucking quickly. I can try and explain this to you. The hot chick is a film about, okay, it's, a... okay. The hot chick is a film where Rob Schneider is a carrot. This is one of the films that spawned that joke in South Park. Rob Schneider is a hot chick. So there's this girl, right? And it's, it's, it's Watch Her Face from, yeah, Watch Her Face. It's the profession of an actress. It's What's Her Face from Mean Girls. Uh, the main bitch, Regina George. So it's, it's Rachel McAdams and Rob Schneider. Rachel McAdams plays the same character as she does when she plays Regina George. And she's like this teenage high school girl who wakes up and she's and it's Rob Schneider. But it's it's not like it's not like Rob Schneider. So there's there's two there's two Rob Schneiders. There's Rob Schneider when he's a hot chick. Alright, I'll try and explain it. So <laughs> Jesus Christ. Rachel Rachel McAdams is this prissy like high school bitch and Rob Schneider is this homeless like thief scoundrel, right? And they wake up one day, and I think there's something magical that makes it happen. There always is in this. It's like that film Vice Versa. Do you guys remember Vice Versa with Judge Reynolds? Ren Renham? Reynolds. They're them two people, and then they wake up one morning, and Rob Schneider is, um, like, Regina George. It's like this, t this teenage girl, right? But it, it's, not like a, it's not like a mind swap. It's not like the, he, he's... he's in like some bumfuck trailer living in a homeless camp and and he, he like he wakes up and he's like oh no I'm, a, I'm the teenage girl in a homeless camp no it's 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 she wakes up in bed you know in a comfy pink mansion right but her body is now rob schneider so she's just like balding middle-aged man and rob schneider wakes up in his homeless camp and he's he's got the body of this like teenage girl right oh he's fucking loving it and it helps him get it helps him like steal things better because no one expects it from like a teenage girl right or he can like trick trick men right but obviously regina george is freaking out because she's rob schneider why wouldn't you and he tells his friends which is something i thought was very rare because usually they try and keep it a secret in these kinds of films the body swap where he's like oh my god it's me i'm regina george the character's not regina george it, but it's me and now I'm this creepy old man. And then all these like, all these teenage girls try and help him or try and help her still be a girl while she's Rob Schneider. And it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a madhouse. It's like, it's a body swap, 
but it's it's like needlessly convoluted and body swaps are needlessly convoluted as they are. They kind of should have just stopped at the original Jodie Foster's Freaky Friday, if I'm completely honest with you. The new guy is a very similar film to The Hot Chick, and I'd, I wouldn't call it too obscure. I know people who have seen it, um, but the new guy's got that dude from Road Trip, and he was in nothing else. It's, a, it's the very oh, nerdy high school kind of premise. I, this is the kind of film that broke me. I spent, I was, I was 10 when, when this film came out. I probably watched it when I was like 11 or 12 for the first time. There are so many of these fucking types of films where it's like, here's a film about a nerd in high school who climbs to the top and gets a girl. And these, these films destroyed everything about me. This, these are responsible for the disheveled, hollowed out cocoon that I am today. Bubble Boy. Bubble Boy has got a very similar feel to the new guy, but um, is a lot more like heartfelt and romantic. Uh, Bubble Boy was kind of based off uh, 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 a, a film with John Travolta, which I think was called The Boy in the Plastic Bubble. But I could be wrong. There's a couple of... Th there's a weird subgenre of films about guys in plastic bubbles. It's Jake Gyllenhaal. It's the most, it's the least Jake Gyllenhaal film that Jake Gyllenhaal has ever done. It's this very goofy, light-hearted comedy about this guy, this kid, who's born with um, no immune system, no germ-fighting bugs. So he lives in his room, right, the whole time. And then he befriends this neighbor girl. Um, but the neighbor girl, like, she goes off to marry this asshole and he doesn't say anything. So she goes to Niagara Falls to do it. And then he decides, oh, I'm going to stop if I, I have to stop her. I have to declare my love. So he builds a plastic bubble suit and he ventures out into the world in his bubble suit. And mayhem ensues. But I have to say, I watched it at the time uh, where I was, I had certain sensibilities and I loved a certain aesthetic style. And I just kind of have this very weird soft spot for Bubble Boy. As you can see, I rated it three and a half stars. Uh, which is a 7 in my book. So I gave it a good rating. That's a good rating to me. Baby Boy. Baby Boy is a 2001 film apparently about a baby boy. I know I've seen this film because I remember like the two very specific scenes from it. But I can't remember the plot. All I remember is that Snoop Dogg's in it. And I think Baby Boy dies at the end. Oh fuck, we got another Rob Schneider film in here. The Animal, 2001. Uh, I don't remember The Animal very well, but I, I think I watched it even more than The Hot Chick. It's just The Hot Chick stuck in my mind more for some reason. But The Animal is about Rob Schneider, who uh, becomes an animal. I know that makes it sound like I don't remember the film at all, but I swear to God, I, I have this nightmarish visage of Rob Schneider galloping across a yard on all fours. When loser Marvin Mange... Or get it? Like, an animal is mangy. Is involved in a horrible car accident, he's brought back to life by a deranged scientist as half man and half animal. His newfound powers are awesome, but their adverse side effects could take over his life. Now Marvin must fight to control his crazy primal urges around his new squeeze, Rihanna, and his rival, Sergeant Sisk, who both think he's one cool cat. That is one of the most 90s descriptions I've ever read. New squeeze, rival, cool cat. I mean, it's the plot. To, it's a very classic plot. Oh, the mad scientist works on someone. I do remember, it's not like he has animal body parts. It's not like a horror show thing where it's like that episode of the Mighty Boosh with the Hitcher or whatever it is. Um, it's like internals. So him getting, him getting like a cheetah's lung. Makes him run really fast on all fours. I don't fucking know. <laughs> there is no movie that has made me want death more. Now, I haven't rated it. I don't know what I would rate it. I don't remember it enough to rate it. But uh, half a star. That's someone's like least favorite film of all time. <laughs> we need to talk about Bowfinger. Bowfinger 
Oh, four and a half stars, look at that. That's a nine in my book. That's a nine in my book, baby. Very few films make it to that. I liked it as well. Bowfinger is a film about this director, played by Steve Martin, who's this sleazeball who um, is trying to make a film, but he barely has a budget for it, and he barely has a cast for it, and he's exploiting all these people to get it done. He's not paying them. He's, get, he's using this little bitch boy technician to get fucking free equipment from Universal Studios or whatever. Uh, and the one thing, the, the last thing he wants this film is like a major movie star to be the star in the film, played by Eddie Murphy. Yeah, Kit Ramsey. Yeah, so uh, he plays this character, Kit Ramsey, who's this big, suave Hollywood action star. Um, but he refuses to be in the film, right? He doesn't want to be in this piece of shit film. So what Steve Martin does as this director is he decides to film the movie around Kit Ramsey without Kit Ramsey knowing that he's being filmed and is in the movie. So he has all these other like B-movie, B-roll actors and actresses in full costume and full character going to Eddie Murphy or Kit Ramsey, the character he's playing, this big star, and acting out and doing their lines and getting into scenes with him without him knowing he's in scenes and them just filming his natural reaction. Here's the kicker. None of the actors who are going up to him and acting their lines know that he's not actually in the film because Steve Martin, the sleazeball he is, has gone to them and said, no, we totally got, we actually, we got Kit Ramsey for the film. Kit Ramsey is in our film. This is going to be, be a big Hollywood film with a big Hollywood actor. Um, but he's very method. So what you can't do is talk to him or engage with him in any way off scene. Like he's, every time you see him, he's going to be in character. So he's got all these actors thinking that they're in a scene with Kit Ramsey and that he knows he's in a scene with them, but he doesn't know that he's being filmed with these actors who doesn't who don't know that he doesn't know he's being filmed. It's it's fucking it's it's a madhouse. It's crazy. And the subplot of this is Kit Ramsey, the actor, is going through all these fucking mental issues and he's in therapy, right? And the film they're filming is this big alien sci-fi. And because these people keep coming up to him and talking about like this alien invasion and shit. He thinks there's actually an alien invasion going on and he's freaking out that people keep coming up to him and talking about aliens and shit. Because he doesn't know he's in a scene and they don't know they're freaking him out because they think he's part of the fucking movie. Alongside it, Eddie Murphy actually plays two characters. He plays Kit Ramsey, but he also plays uh, this guy, uh, this nerdy guy who Steve Martin hires as a body double for the scenes where they don't specifically need Kit Ramsey's face and he can just like fill in. But both characters are played by Eddie Murphy. It's just one's like in glasses with braces and they even do this scene where he takes his glasses off and it's like, wow, he looks exactly like Eddie Mur like Kit Ramsey. But Steve Martin's such an idiot in all the wrong ways <laughs> that he doesn't think to look at this guy who is literally the same person and go, oh, we'll just use him and say it's Kit Ramsey. He just, he just goes, oh yeah, we'll just use him as a body double. It's so good. It's such a good 90s comedy. You, you must watch it. I implore you to watch it. Basketball. Fuck, I remember Basketball. Basketball uh, is a film I watched for the first time. Um, a friend recorded it on VHS for me and then gave it to me, but also accidentally recorded over the first, like, 10 minutes of it. So I think I've watched Basketball about... 40 times in my lifetime and never seen the opening fucking 10 minutes. These guys make this new sport in their backyard, which gets turned into a national sport, where it's it's sort of a combination between basketball and baseball, hence where the name comes from, in that there's, there is a baseball diamond you have to stand on, um, but the actual, like, instead of batting, what you do is you have to make a hoop score. And there's no like, there's no like team play. You don't bat around people, right? But while the player is trying to do that, th there's a player from the op from the opposite team standing in front of them who gets to try and psych them out. And um, 
you know, Trey Parker and Matt Stone, they invent the game uh, and they end up being the best at psyching people out as well. And they do all kinds of shit. They fucking drink Marlon Brando's fucking liposuction fat out of his stomach through a straw. I think they fucking make out with a grandma at one point just to like trip people up and make them go, ooh, ooh. I'm not sure if this one's completely off the radar, but I'm going to talk about it anyway, just based off the fact that everybody I tell about Romeo and Michelle's high school re reunion goes, what's that? No, I haven't seen that film. Uh, and they're, they're wrong to have done so. Got on my bad side. Deduct points. Human beings are fucking score machines. You've just dropped numerically, my friend. I mean, we were friends, not friends anymore, because you haven't watched Romy Michelle's High School Reunion. Romy Michelle's High School Reunion is a film about two ditzy blondes. They're, they grow up, and they're still ditzy blondes, and their high school reunion's coming up, and they panic because they've done nothing with their lives, and they've not, you know, they're not succeeding in anything, and they don't have relationships, but they decide to go to the high school reunion and make a bunch of shit up for how successful they are and that's the film is <laughs> two two girls go to their high school reunion and there's the journey there and then while they're actually there and talking to all their high school bullies that bullied them and shit and their high school crushes and all these other students they remember uh, it's such a simple premise it, again it feels very 90s in all the right ways it's such a good film and if anyone I know is watching this and hasn't seen it, when I already told them to watch it, and I know I already did, because everyone I see, I tell them to watch Romy and Michelle's High School Reunion, and you're looking at me, and you still haven't watched it, I'm disappointed in you. And I'm telling you to watch it right now. Damn, you know you get, you, you, you know you get 90s when Airheads gets pulled up, man. Fuck me. Airheads, look at that. Airheads is... The 90s incarnate. I know I've said that about a lot of films on here, but Airheads is a film about these three guys in a rock band that uh, they really want to get noticed. So they take their tape to um, a radio station and they're like, play our tape, and they won't do it. So what they do is they take the radio station hostage until they play the tape. And I think it escalates to the point where they won't leave until like a producer comes down and signs them on. I don't quite remember like the end goal of it. It's very Encino Man. I would say it's better than Encino Man. This is a film about the tragic death of terrestrial rock radio. Eerily prescient. As that wouldn't happen for another decade. <laughs> Alright mate. Alright Joseph. Jesus Christ. But yeah. Feels very Wayne's World. Very Detroit Rock City. Which is, a, is another decent film. I don't know if I have that on here, actually. Oh, I don't! And I've definitely seen it. Boom! That's 10,000... That's 1,041, baby. If, I, if it was 10,000, I'd be in the fucking grave. If that's all I'm doing with my life, is watching 10,000 films, I'd put myself down. Fuck. Do I want to talk about Freaked? Freaked is definitely obscure, and I know it's obscure, because the whole fucking thing is available to watch on YouTube. I have fucking checked this. Freaks of... F f freaks of... How, how do I describe it in a word? Freaked is fucked, yo. Fucked yo is two words, but... No, it's like, it's like froyo. It's like, like yogurt. It's fucked yo. Instead of froyo, it's fucked yo. Bill from Bill and Ted and his friends get captured by an evil scientist who turns them into circus freaks for his freak show. It is very in your face. The f camera's like fucking it's like right up here against your fucking nostrils. It's it's a it's like a wide angle angle lens everywhere and every character pops. A thinking man's stupid comedy. I'd say it's a stupid man's fever dream into who made this <laughs> mr t's in this film mr t is in this film randy quaid well that's to be expected william sadler not the william sadler 
Yeah, the William Sadler's in this film. What did they think it was going to be? Some fucking magnum opus? <laughs> the end goal? The end goal of cinema? These were a birthday present. Tennessee cinnamon liqueur. I better not vomit this because I'm working tomorrow. So Frankenhooker's a weird film. Uh, 1990. So Frankenhooker is a film about a guy who accidentally kills his girlfriend. And it is an accident. He accidentally swings about and chops her up with a fucking lawnmower or a hedge trimmer or some other such nonsense. And he goes a bit potty. Um, so he, he decides to try and fix his girlfriend, but obviously a lot of the pits kind of fucked up because he's, he's chewed him up in the fucking lawnmower or whatever. Hedge trimmer. I don't remember. Um, so what he, what he resorts to doing is hiring prostitutes and killing them. I remember not thinking it was terrible. I think I enjoyed it more than Satan's little helper. I'll tell you that for a start. So let's, let's try and hopefully there's something really weird in here. That, that, that somebody doesn't quite know about. Like this? Like this? Fucking, like, like, oh my god. My mum graced, blessed our household one day by just walking in with this black decked VHS uh, thing and opened it up to reveal uh, the monolith inside. Young Einstein... There's a bit where he's working in the patent office, and there's a bit where he's in a mental institution. But the rest... He, he, he invents beer because he splits the atom. It's, it's... What's the word for something that's not, like, that's historically out of place? I, I forget. And there's a lot of that going on. He invents electric guitars. I can't remember if the zany comedy was well executed as it would be in something like Bowfinger or Basketball, um, or if it was just dumb shit. I just, I simply cannot remember. I remember there's a musical number at the end. I really have to re-watch this film now, just out of intrigue. I wonder what I'd think. Maybe I'll make a little YouTube video on that. I don't know if I'd say I have really good taste in film. I always kind of, you know what, I will. I have good taste in film. I don't want to be a. I don't get confident in a lot of areas, but I get confident with my love of film. I get confident in my knowledge of film because, as you can fucking tell by the fact that I've watched over a thousand films in my lifetime, I've dropped two films. How fucking dare you? <laughs> um, I've watched over a thousand films in my lifetime. I, I know plenty of them. This is my letterbox profile. If you want to follow me, it's Gavin W. But yeah, I just got the random impulse to make a, this video, make a video. Uh, I'm working on a script for a proper video, and there's a couple of other little off-the-cuff things like this I want to film. And like I say, if any of these underdogs I talked about appeal to you, go watch them, maybe. Um, apart from Romeo and Michelle's High School Reunion, which is a go watch it definitely. You have to. I've said it now. It's in, it's in the cards. It's on the ether. I mixed some stuff up there, but you, you, you've already watched it. You just don't know you've watched it because I've forced you to now. It's in your head and you're going to do it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video, whatever the fuck it is.